Building a single page web app doesn't need to be complicated. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use JavaScript and HT Access to build a fully functioning single page web app with no frameworks and no external library. Hey everyone, my name is Andy and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to use JavaScript and HT Access to build a fully functioning single page web. You may be wondering what HT Access is. It's essentially a file that sits on your server that handles some backend processes. So for example, page redirecting, which is what we're going to be using today. So if you've ever gone to a web page and you've got a 404 error message, normally they look quite fancy and within theme of the rest of the website. And that's because it's using a redirect to take you to a custom 404 page rather than using the standard out of the box one. But on top of that, it can also take a URL and rewrite it so that the internal system running the website can handle it better. So for instance, if I went to twitter.com slash andymill.io, that's interpreting that URL as twitter.com slash question mark, because it's a query, it's a parameter, profile equals andymill.io. And it's rewriting it on the server side so that you get to have a nice clean URL, but the system knows how to handle it properly. So. Without further ado, let's begin. So this is what we're going to be building today. It's just a very simple web page. Um, it doesn't actually do anything. There's no content here, so to speak. I've just put headers on so you can see that different pages are in fact being loaded. So when you click on home, it will take you to the welcome page, to, to about page, the URL changes there. The pricing page is the same. And if you look on the uh, history here, I've gone to different web pages. And if I then go to say pricing, uh, if I misspell pricings, for example, then it takes us to a page that we can't find and we can go back home. It's very simple to set this up and we're gonna go ahead and build that right now in Visual Studio Code. So we're in our new instance of Visual Studio Code and our local host, as you can see, is empty. There's nothing on here. So we're gonna go ahead and create a couple of files just to get started. We want an index.html. We want a style.css. We want a script.js. I'm going to add some pages under a new folder just to make it easier to work with. So we've got home.html, uh, about.html, pricing.html, and finally we have our 404.html. And now we come to the MVP of the moment, our HT access file. I'm going to leave this one blank for the moment. I'm just going to go ahead and add some very basic things here. That. On our index, we're going to, I'm just going to close this over just so you can see a bit more of what I'm doing. I'm just going to build this with Emmet quickly and then, whoop, style and a script source of script.js. I'm going to build a little nav bar with ULs and I'm going to do something different with the LIs. We're not going to actually add links to this and you'll see why in a moment. So we have menu item value of home. I'm just going to copy these. So we have about the pricing, and of course, these values need to change as well. And then beneath our nav, we have our main element. And in there, I'm going to create a section and give it an ID of container. And then beneath that, we'll just have a footer and just very basic. And then here, it's just for a little styling for it later on. And this is all we need for our index.html. Everything else is going to be handled in our JavaScript and on the other pages that get loaded into the web app. 
So before we do anything else, we need to go to HT Access and begin working on this. Now, the first thing you need to do is have rewrite engine on. This is just telling your server that you're going to be rewriting URLs from a path based string to a query based string. So we want to create a rewrite rule, We're actually going to be changing. So here we have a through to Z, capital A through to capital Z, and zero to nine plus dollar. And this basically says that we can have any string that's numerical, uppercase, lowercase, and we are going to have that as our parameter, which we're then going to add on to the end of our index.html file. So what this is doing is it's taking this bit here and rewriting it to this. So this is how the user will see it, which admittedly here looks terrible, but bear with me, it gets good. And it's rewriting it into this, which the web server can then understand and process it from there. That's all we need from HT Access, so he can go away for the moment. Well, let's go into our script file, window.onload run this as a function. So what we're going to do is we're going to handle this in two different ways. We're going to handle it from the point of I've manually typed in this URL and then we're going to go from the point of I've clicked on a link. So we'll start off with manually typing in the URL. So, so here we have a const path which is the window.location.path name and we're going to turn it into an array simple as that and now we're going to do a switch statement and the reason for that is because one it's much easier than using ifs and else ifs but two it handles predetermined scenarios and then if something isn't predetermined do this so in our case we want a page for home about and pricing and then everything else goes to our 404 page so we will do a switch path and we want this to be the first element not zero because it counts the first part of the url up to the first slash as the first element now from the url to the first slash is blank so it ignores that so we're going to be working with path so we start with our home page which is blank we're going to call the function load page home break. And I'll just copy this. So we have about and about pricing, pricing, and then we want default which will load our... So that's handled manually typing in the URL. Now we're going to handle clicking links. So for this, we are going to do a document.querySelectorAll and it's on nav, no, it's not nav, it's just menu item. So we're going to add an event listener of a click as a function. And we're going to get the path value from our item dot get attribute of value. The reason for this is we want to use this value twice. The first one is load page path and secondly we're going to do something that i think is really cool i'm going to use the history api as part of javascript to change the url dynamically and add it so that we've navigated throughout the page so we're going to do first of all if path equals 
nothing. Then we are going to window dot location dot. Oh, no, it's not location. It's window dot history dot push date. We're not going to be bothering about these. This is just the uh, any data that we're going to be passing through or any queries that we're passing through and we're not going to be bothering about that. We're just going to send it back to the home page. Otherwise we are going to send the history to our path. And now we're going to write our load page function. Can you guess what this does? First of all, put a guard clause in just to make sure that we actually load a page rather than not load a page, if that makes any sense. Now there are a number of ways you can use to call data from another source. You can use promises, you can use fetch, but we're just going to use a simple XML HTTP request for the purposes of this, just because it's quick, it's easy, and I know it's going to work without any issue. So we are going to create our container, which is here. And then const request equals new XML HTTP request. So we're going to open this with a get request. And we're going to be getting the request from our pages path.html. So that's why we need to make sure that the path is valid and not an empty string, otherwise it's just going to throw a wobbler and say I can't find pages.html because that doesn't exist. We're going to send it, then our request.onload is a function. So this is going to happen once it's got the data from the server and then we'll, we'll start running. So this function is going to first of all make sure that the data has come back with a 200 HTTP code. So if request.status equals 200, then we're going to put our container dot in a HTML equals our request dot response text. And that's it. So if we save this and run this now, we have our very basic web page. If I click on about, it's taken us to our about page. You can see we have localhost slash about. And if you click on pricing, it takes us to pricing. If I enter in the wrong value, it takes us to our 404. And if we click on our home, it takes us back to our home page. Now, the reason why this isn't working is because this should say if path is home, because that's what's in our home page. There we go. So I'm on my about page, I'm on my home page, and it's gone to that. Now, there's one more thing that we can do to make this a little bit better. We can go to document.title equals path. It's that simple. So now we're on our home page, or our about page, or our pricing page, and we have our about page and our home page added to our history, and the path name changes accordingly. And that's all there is to it to make a simple single page web app. There's so much more you can do with this. You can add loading screens, check out my video on that. You can add styles to this to make it look better than what it is. Um, but for the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna bother styling it. But all the code for this project will be available on GitHub with a link in the description below. And that is how you build a single page web app using our MVP of the day, HT Access. I really hope you enjoyed this video and learned a thing or two about HT Access and what it can do for you. If you like this video, please leave a like and a comment. I love hearing from you guys. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It will only encourage me to make more videos like this more often. Check out my website, andymel.io, and I'll see you next time.